Hello, in this video, I'll take you through our standard event planning template. So last month, we released the basic event planning template and the feedback has been awesome. Thank you guys so much for your recommendations, suggestions, and overall comments. Now, in case you haven't watched that video, the link should be somewhere on the screen so you can click on the link to watch the basic template video. Now, the standard event planning template is an upgraded version of the basic template. Basically, we combined all of your recommendations together and we selected the three most requested features and we've added them to this template. So in this video, I'll be going through the standard template, pretty much highlighting those new functionalities. So on the screen, I've opened up the template and it's powered with Microsoft Excel. So once you have Microsoft Excel installed, preferably a version from 2013, all the functionalities will work. Now, once you open up the template, you arrive at the dashboard, and this holds three thumbnails to navigate to the three major sections of the template. We have the customer section, where the user documents new customers, the event section, where you create new events, and the report section, which holds multiple automatically generated reports. Now, in this video, I'm going to go through all the sections. I'm going to start with the first, which is the customer section. To open it up, you simply click on the label, and it goes to that section. All sections have been formatted identically. In the upper left-hand corner, we have the section title, which tells you at any point in time the section you're currently on. So notice it says customer information. So the user knows that this is where you document all customer information. To the right of this, we have three buttons to add a new customer, to delete an existing customer, and to add income when received from a customer. At the top of this, in the upper right-hand corner, we have a navigation pane with several labels to navigate to other sections of the template. Simply clicking on a label, for instance, dashboard, takes you to that section of the template. Recall, we then clicked on customers. The customer button, we equally take you to the customer section and other buttons to other sections that I'm going to cover shortly. Below the three buttons here, we have the data table, and this is where all customer information is going to be listed. At the top, you notice that we have column headers, and these are the attributes that the user is expected to supply. Now to add a new customer, you simply click on the new customer button at the top, and this pops up a data entry form. Now data forms provide a simpler way to transfer data to this data table here. So you notice that all column headers are equally listed on the form as labels. The customer simply has to supply values to the white portion of the form. Now the first label requests for the inquiry date, and by default, Excel is going to enter today's date. However, you can modify the date portion, the month portion, or the year portion. Now by inquiry dates, we mean when the customer was converted from a lead to an actual customer. So pretty much maybe the first time the customer calls you to place an order. Now I'm going to backdate and assume the first time the customer called me was on the 25th of February, 2017. Once you're done entering the inquiry date, you make use of your tab key to move to the next field, which is the customer name field. So pressing my tab key takes me there. I then go ahead and supply the customer's name. Pressing the tab key takes me to the phone number field. I supply the customer's phone number, email address, and residential address. Now I'm just going to be generic with the residential address, however you can be more detailed. Once you've supplied values to all the fields, you simply click the enter button to transfer the data to the data table. It tells us the customer has been added and once we click OK, we should see the information listed in the first row. So you notice all the values we supplied are listed. Now the two columns on the extreme right are formally generated columns. So the outstanding amount will tell you at any point in time, the total amount, if any, that this customer owes you. And the duration column will tell you the duration, that's how long you've known the customer. So using the first call date you entered and today's date, it will automatically calculate the duration you've known the customer. So now we know we've known Rose Random for one year, zero months and zero days. And this is dynamic. So once you open up the template tomorrow, it's going to show one year, zero months, and one day. So at any point in time, you know how long you've known a customer. Now to add an, another customer, you simply click on the new customer button at the top and repeat the process. Pops up a form. I'm going to assume the first time the customer called us was the 1st of April, 2014. So I'm changing the day, month, and year portion. Moving to the next field with my tab key, I'm entering the customer's name, phone number, email address, and residential address. Once I'm done, I simply click the enter key to transfer this data to my data table. So now you notice we have two rows. The first row holds data for the first customer's information, that's rows random, and the second row holds data for the second customer, which is John Random. 
You probably notice that for John Random, the Tempest tells us that he owes us nothing, and we've known him for 10 months and 24 days. So that's how you add customers to your database. You simply click the new customer button and fill all the values. Now to delete a customer, it's a two-step process. You simply click on the customer name. So you notice right now I've clicked on the cell with the customer name. Once I click on delete, the template is going to ask, am I sure I want to delete this customer and equally tell me the customer's name. If I do, I click on yes. If I don't, I click on no. So that's how you add new customers and you delete existing customers. Now the last button is where you add income when received from a customer. And you notice it's in red because income is coming in. So it's assumed that your only source of income is from customers, and that's why this button is placed in the customer section. Now I'm not going to cover this functionality yet because we haven't created events or vendors. So I'm first going to go to these two sections, then come back and add income. So going to the next section, which is the events section, I simply click on the events label, and this opens up that section of the template. You notice it has an identical formatting. In the upper left-hand corner, we have the section title, which tells the user that this is where you document event information. To the right of this, we have three buttons to add a new event, delete an existing event, and book vendors for an event. At the top of this, we have a navigation pane, and below this, we have the data table where all the events are going to be listed. To add a new event, the user simply clicks on the new event button, and this pops up a form. Now, the events form is made up of two sections, the upper section, where the user documents events details, and the bottom section, where the user assigns vendors to a particular event. Now, for all my demonstrations, I'm going to backdate to year 2017, so that for my reports, I can have data across multiple months. I'm equally going to assume that rules random books and events for the 25th of July, 2017. Moving to the next field, I'm going to select the customer associated with this event on this day, which is rules random. Tab into the next field, I'm going to provide details of this event. Now here you can be as descriptive as you want to be. Moving to the next field, I indicate the amount that I'm going to charge rules random for this event on this day. So let's assume I'm charging 1 million and we're expecting 100 guests. So now I've supplied values to all the fields in the upper section of the form. Now the bottom section, which is the vendor detail section, is optional. So if as at when you're creating this form, you're not sure of the vendors you're going to use, you can leave the section blank and simply click on enter Later on, you can use the book vendor section to book vendors for this event. So that's what I'm going to do for the first example. I'm going to leave this section blank, click on enter, and store only the events. And that tells me the event has been added. And we should see the event listed on the first drop. So you notice all the values that I supplied. And the template will automatically generate a unique event ID. Now the event ID is made up of the event date and the customer name. So every event you create, the template will assign an event ID. Now this event ID is going to be used later on when we're booking vendors and when we're creating reports. So now I've successfully created the first event. However, I've not assigned any vendors. I'm going to now create the second event. To do that, I repeat the process. I click the new event button, it pops up the form. Now before I do this, first of all, I'm going to add some vendors to the vendor section so that we can be able to use the bottom section of the form and assign vendors. I'm just going to cancel this form, and I'm going to go to my vendor section by clicking on the label on the navigation pane. So clicking on vendors opens up that section of the form. You notice that I've already added four vendors to the vendor section. So in the template you're going to receive, this section is going to be blank. I only added the four vendors so as to shorten the length of the video. To add a new vendor, you simply click on the add new button. It inserts a blank new row. You supply the vendor name, you tap to the next field, supply the phone number, the email, and product and services rendered. To delete a particular vendor, you simply click on the first cell on that row. Notice the first cell is highlighted. You click on delete, you click on yes, and that row is going to be deleted. Now the standard spreadsheet supports tracking vendor payments and outstanding. That's a new functionality. And that's why you notice we have a new column here on the extreme right titled outstanding total. So the template at any point in time will tell you the total amount that you owe each of your vendors. So you notice it says zero because we haven't booked any of these vendors. So you have the ability now to know at any point in time the total amount you owe your vendors. In the same way, we have add payments button at the top where you can add payments to a particular vendor. Now I'm going to come back and explain this functionality. First of all, I'm going to add another event, assign in vendors. So clicking on the events label, going back to the events section to click on new event. 
Now I'm going to book an event for the second customer, which is John Random, for the 1st of September, 2017. So I'm changing the day, month, and year portion of the date. Moving to the next field, I'm going to select John Random, indicating details of the event. Let's assume this is a wedding party. And I'm going to charge two million, and we're expecting 200 guests. So I've supplied values to the upper section of the form. Now the bottom section, I can assign vendors. So as I said, this is optional. You can either assign them now, or later on using the book vendor button. Now I'm going to assign vendors now to this event. So clicking the drop down list is going to display all vendors as obtained from the vendor section. So if you have 20 vendors here, this drop down list is going to list 20 vendors. If you go ahead and select the vendor you want to book, indicate the amount that the vendor is charging you. So let's assume this vendor is charging me 100,000. And lastly, you indicate the job that you expect this vendor to perform for the amount that they charge. So here, try to be as descriptive as possible, indicating the exact service that you want the vendor to render. Next, I'm going to book another vendor. Indicate the amount that this vendor is charging me and the service I expect the vendor to perform. Now, the form supports up to five vendors. However, if you want to add additional vendors to this event, you then make use of your book vendor section. So there are two ways you can book vendors for any event. You can either use the bottom portion of the form or you can make use of the button here to book a vendor. Now, this is a new functionality from the standard spreadsheet. You now have the ability to book vendors for events and you can book unlimited vendors for any particular event. So once you're done, you simply click on the enter button and the template is going to store the event and also the vendors that you've assigned. Once you click on OK, we should see the event listed. So you notice now we have two rows. The first row represents the first event. The second row represents the second event. And you notice the template has generated an event ID for the John Random event. So now we've booked two events. We've indicated that we've charged rows random 1 million and we've charged John Random 2 million. However, we haven't collected any money from them. So if we go to the customer section, you notice that now the template is telling us that they are owing us money. So the template automatically recognizes that we've booked events, but we haven't received any cash. So Rose Random owes us 1 million, Gen Random owes us 2 million. Now, once we receive cash from the customers, you simply come to your customer section, and now I can demonstrate the add income functionality. So let's assume they're both going to pay us 50% upfront. So Rose Random is going to pay us 500,000, and Gen Random is going to pay us 1 million. So click on the Add Income button. It takes us to that section. And here, you just document the income details. The day in which you're receiving the money. So let's assume that we collect the money on the 23rd of July, 2017 from Rose Random. The customer you're collecting money from, Rose Random. Now, once you select the customer, the template will automatically display the total amount that customer owes you. So it will automatically pull that information from the customer section. Now you can go ahead and indicate the amounts that you are receiving from the customer, which is 500,000. So now I've indicated cash received from Rose Random. To add another income received, I simply click the add new button. It inserts a blank new row. I indicate the day I'm receiving the money. So let's assume that on the 1st of September, 2017, I'm receiving money from John Random. Notice the template will automatically tell me the total amount John is owing me, 2 million and John is going to pay 50% of that amount. At the top, the template will calculate the subtotals to tell you the total amount you've received across every calendar month, as summing up everything together, which is 1.5. And the bottom part will tell you the total amount you've received only this month, but we're in February 2018, so we haven't received any money for February 2018, and that's why it's zero. Now, going back to the customer section, We've indicated now two payments received, 50% from both customers. So going back to my customer section, you notice that the outstanding amount is automatically reduced. Rose Random now owes us only 500 and John Random only 1 million. So all the sections are interconnected. So at any point in time, you know the total amount each customer is owing you. In the same way, recall in our events section, we've booked two vendors. For the John Random events, we booked two vendors, that's Fordo Services and the Catra. So now if I go to my vendor, you notice that those two services are not owing us money. I mean, we're now owing them. So now we owe Photo John Services 100,000, food vendors at Buja 200. And we haven't used these two vendors, so we owe them nothing. So the template automatically recognizes that.
Now going back to my events section, recall I said there are two ways you can book events. You can book vendors either using the bottom section or you can make use of the book vendor button. So clicking on the book vendor section oops, takes you to that section. At the top it tells you this is where you book vendor. The add news used to add a new booking, the deletes to delete an existing booking, and add payments when you're paying a vendor. Now these are the two vendors that we booked, remember? Photo John, 100,000, Puda Buja, 200. So in the event section, whenever you fill up the bottom section, so whenever you assign vendors here on the form, the data is automatically transferred from here to the book vendor section. So the two rows we added earlier on, recall, they've now been transferred to the book vendor section. So this is where all of your bookings are going to be listed. So you notice 100 for John, 200 for Fuda Buja. In the same way, if we add payments, let's assume we equally want to pay them 50-50%. So I go to my add payments. This is where you document all expense information. Now by expenses, we mean all business expenses. So your rent, your utility, transportation, and also when you make payments to vendors. To add a new expense, you make use of the add new button. And to delete an existing expense, you make use of the delete row button. And all expenses you add are going to be listed on the data table below. Now to add a new payment, so recall that we booked two vendors. So going to my events section, you notice we've booked two vendors. So we're owing these two vendors. That's John Photo Services, we're owing 100,000. And Fuda Buja, we're owing 200,000. So now we're going to add 50% payments to both vendors. So going to the add payment section, we simply enter the payment date first. So I'm going to assume this is the 1st of September 2017. Make use of my tab key. Next, you need to indicate the event associated with the payment. So when you're paying vendors, you're paying vendors for services rendered at an event. So here you need to indicate the event. And the moment you select the event, on the right-hand corner of the screen, the template will automatically list any vendors associated with that event. So recall that we haven't associated any vendors with the Rose Random event, and that's why nothing is listed. However, if I change this to John Random, you notice that the two vendors will be listed here, which is the food and the photo services. So the template will automatically list all the associated vendors on the right. So now you know these are the two vendors you need to pay. You can go ahead here and then select the vendor name. Now, just to demonstrate how dynamic that is, notice when I change this to Rose Random, nothing is displayed here. So now I'm going to assign vendors to this event on the 25th of July, 2017. So I simply need to just go to my event section and then book a vendor. So clicking on the book vendor opens that section. Simply click the add new button. It inserts a new row and you can now supply value. So first you indicate the day. So I'm going to make this the 23rd of July, 2017. That's the day you're booking the vendor. So the day you call the vendor to book their services. Next you indicate the event ID. So this is the Rose Randoms event. And I'm equally going to book John Fordo services. Let's assume this time he charges me 150,000 and he's expected to print 150 pictures and five large frames. So now I've successfully booked this vendor for this event. To book another vendor, you simply click the add new button and you repeat the process. So I'm equally going to use the same booking date. So let's assume the same day, which is the 23rd of July. For this same event, I'm going to book the decor services. Let's assume they charge me 200,000 and they're to decorate the event all and the church. So now I've successfully booked two vendors for this event. Now I'm just going to add a third vendor. Click on the add new button, inserts a row. I'm going to make it the same day. So this is the day I call the vendor. This is the event I'm booking for. And this is going to be the makeup services. Let's assume they charge 130,000 and the service is just makeup services. So now I've successfully booked three vendors for the Rose Random events. So the John Random event has two vendors. The Rose Random event now has three vendors. And I've booked Photo John services for two of the events. So he's booked for the John Random and also for the Rose Random. That means that we owe John services a total of 250,000, which is 100 plus 150. Because we haven't made any payments, so if I go to my vendor section, we should see 250 for John services. In the same way, you notice what I just added, the professional decor, 200, the makeup services, 130. So this will automatically update.